everyone. So this video has been requested a long time ago by John and we're out here at the cemetery today. Gonna hang out with my buddy Micah who is the grave digger and caretaker for several of the local cemeteries. We are gonna chat with him about how they kind of lay out the cemetery, how they find the grave, and kind of walk through the process of how he digs a grave when he needs to do a burial. So let's go chat with Micah and find out how this is all done. Did you, how wide did the lots have to be? These graves are four foot wide by 12 foot deep. There are four graves per lot. The lots are 16 foot by 12 foot deep. The important thing is, when you're facing east, the graves are numbered from left to right. Fine. So our burial here is in grave lot 219. Our markers are on the southwest corner of the lot. So we are in 219 and this is grave 4. So you just measure and... There's another marker over here. In this case, it's actually on the other side of the 10-foot driveway. Okay. For the next lot on that side. Every, every cemetery is marked and numbered. To hopefully At by a, a metal marker of some kind, uh, the probably. Metal, the metal markers, the stainless steel discs don't rust, and we can find them with a metal detector. Gotcha. Before these, they used a clay marker with a number stamped on it. Those are still accessible, but they break sometimes when you hit them with a shovel to find them. They do sink under the dirt. The metal ones do too. They work themselves in after a while, but they're easy enough to find. opener opener and closer here but at other some of the other ones you cover at Wayland I am officially the cemetery supervisor just walking around the cemetery a little bit while Micah is getting what would be the sod layer removed from the grave so when it's warm and there's grass and everything then you easily can move out that sod so then when you fill the grave back in you would replace those sod pieces so it would attach itself back in and um, the grave wouldn't look as incomplete when done this time of the year though ground's really hard starting to frost and um, hasn't froze down into the ground yet. So just to tell you what I love most about Micah out here and working with him when he's taking care of the cemeteries, I can ask him about pretty much anybody buried in any of the cemeteries that he cares for. And Micah knows where they're buried. He knows who's related to who. He knows the history of the cemeteries. He knows the history of the people and he cares about them. So it's not just digging graves and burying people. It's knowing the space he's caring for, knowing the people, knowing the stories, knowing the history. And I just love that about him and what he does for the communities that he works in.
still about four and a half, five feet deep. Okay. The vault is three feet tall, so a foot and a half below the surface is enough to find it with a probe next time. And that's plenty of deep enough to be out of the way. What do you do when you're getting in these spots where there's lots of headstones, there's lots of things that you have to maneuver around? It all comes to the skill of the operator. It's uh, slow and steady and uh, careful. And That's you move the headstones if you have occasionally to? Occasionally I move headstones if I have to. I can usually get over top of a two foot tall headstone without a problem. The bigger ones I have had to move trying to cut in the corners as close as he can. The better you can use the bucket to get your corners, get your base, get your walls, the less hand work with the tools and other shovels and things that you have to get in and do. Now, we had talked, this uh, earth is pretty stable here. There are some cemeteries you get into that are sand, and so as you dig, the grave caves in on itself. So. The grave digger will then have to go in with boards and planks and brace the walls so that way they can get the vault in and it will all cave in on itself. Sometimes you get into the grave and there may be water or if they've dug the grave before and it rains then the hole may get some water in it. So sometimes cemeteries have to use pumps and equipment to get the water out of the grave or to warm up the ground so that they can dig into the earth because if it's too frozen you can't do the burial. In the years you've been doing this have you ever had to not do the burial because it's been too frozen? Um, no I have not. We have a grave far. Uh, looks like the top of a hog roaster. It's eight foot long four foot wide and you put a propane torch in the end. It's double walled insulated and it heats the ground it thaws about an inch an hour. So, I've had to use that twice in 10 years. Usually with the snow cover, it insulates the ground enough so the frost doesn't get into the ground. All right, so how much leeway do you have between one grave to the next? So typically, my boards are cut, so my hole is about six inches wider than the vault on both sides. So between the vault, I have about eight inches, or a foot. Depending on the cemetery, depending on how the last guy laid it in, I have run into crooked vaults, I have run into uphill and downhill vaults. Um, mine I do my best to make plumb and square. Now do you always bury head one way and foot the other? <laughs> Uh, typically, we put the head to the west, so the bodies are facing east for the sun. What if it's a north-south running cemetery? Well, then I go by what the Catholics put there last. <laughs> um, I have done an Indian burial facing west because he was a warrior and he needed to go to the western door. That's where they go to the western door. So we're a little deep yet. If you get them too deep, the vault guy's straps don't reach the bottom of the vault. So then you got bigger problems. 
So Mike has finished digging the hole now, and what he will do is move some of this dirt right there, <laughs> and he'll move it off site so that it's out of the way for the burial tomorrow. So when the family comes out and they're here for a graveside, all this dirt isn't right here. He'll then cover the grave with some boards for the night, and I'll be all ready to go for tomorrow for the burial. So super huge thanks today to Micah for taking the time to explain what happens out here at the cemetery that's usually not seen by most people. Um, we can see the hard work that goes into this and the manpower, and especially when you get into some of the cemeteries that you do have the sand and the caving in graves and it takes a lot of extra labor. So thank you to all the people that put in the time and effort to take care of the places that we lay our loved ones to rest. Check you guys on the next video and make sure to comment, like, and share. Talk to you guys soon. Bye.